The Greater Southwest Insurance Company office in Kingman, Arizona. The following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Red Rock matter. <laughs> Expense account item one, a dollar seventy for a telegram to Jake Kessler, giving him my flight time. Item two, one hundred and sixty-nine dollars even, plane fare and incidentals, Hartford to New York to Las Vegas, Nevada. Early the next morning, then, Jake was there at the Vegas airport waiting for me. Tall, angular, well-tanned, wearing jeans, a denim shirt, high-heeled boots, and a broad-brimmed hat. Well, he looked like he should have been riding a range pony instead of a car. We headed east on 95 through Boulder City, then south toward Kingman, Arizona. All right, now, Johnny, now that we've got the how to do over with, I'd better tell you why I called you out here. Hey, you said something about a murder, Jake. We'll know for sure when we get down to Kingman. Now, back in 52, Johnny, a couple of boys named Ralph Garrett and Jerry Bisbee were doing quite a bit of prospecting around these parts. Gold? Gold, silver, copper, anything they could find. Well, how they ever joined up together, nobody could rightly understand it. Now, why do you say that? Well, uh, Ralph was okay. Not much money, but a nice wife, home, family. But Jerry Bisbee, well, the town had been hoping he'd go somewhere else for years. Ah, I see. Anyhow, one day they set out to pound the rocks up near the town of Chloride over near Mount Tipton. Months or so later, though, Jerry Bisbee came back to Kingman alone. Oh? Folks asked him where Ralph Garrett was. He said Ralph had left him to go out and get a job in California. And left Bisbee with the rights to all their claims? Well, now, that wasn't even talked about. Not then. Well, go on, Chick. Anyhow, Ralph's wife claimed it was all a big lie that Bisbee had taken Ralph out there in the desert and killed him. But why? Why did she think that? Claimed Ralph almost hadn't gone on that particular trip, that he'd gotten suspicious of Bisbee, that he was scared of him, and that Ralph wouldn't have just up and left her like that. Well, did she tell this to the police? Sure did. So they looked around all over the state, even notified the boys over in California, but nobody couldn't find a sign of Ralph. I see. So then she got a hold of some relative she has over in the state's attorney's office over in Phoenix, and Johnny, before you knew it, Jerry Bisbee was up on trial for murder. But on such flimsy evidence and without a body. Sure, Jerry. sure, sure. Jerry was acquitted. Now, like I say, that was back in 52. But we only paid off the insurance on Ralph about a year ago, you know, lacking any legal proof that Ralph was dead until that statute of limitations said he had to be here or something. Yeah, yeah, I know. But now about this man Bisbee. Does he still live in Kingman? No, Johnny. As soon as that trial was over, he sold his little place, left town, and never come back. Uh huh. And with no actual proof that he'd killed his yeah, partner. Now, just a minute. Yeah? Didn't your eastern papers carry anything about that big windstorm we had out here last week? Windstorm? Biggest one we've had in years. Must have blew 70, 80 mile an hour. Oh, hour, Johnny. oh yeah, I guess I did read something about that. Sure you yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, I remember now. That, that wind uncovered the bones of a man. A man who'd apparently become lost somewhere out here in this desert some years ago. Lost, huh? What do you mean? There's something the papers didn't say, Johnny. There was a bullet hole in the back of the skull. Oh. From exactly the same caliber as the old Winchester 94 Jerry Bisbee had always carried with him. Uh-huh. Then it looks like the skeleton is Ralph Garrett's. Murdered and buried out there by this Jerry Bisbee. Well, now there's only one person can identify that skeleton for sure, Johnny. Who's that? Young Doc Blessing. And if we're lucky, we'll find him awaiting for us in Kingman. Well, that was all Jake had to say about the matter until we could talk to Dr. Blessing. When we got to Jake's office there in Kingman, we found a note in the door from Dr. Blessing asking us to wait for him. So we sat there and waited. And then he came here and... Oh, this is dang flies. I think out here in this nice clean desert air, they wouldn't... There you are. Oh, oh. oh I won't be able to hear out of this ear for a week. Yeah, I thought you were trying to knock your head off there for a minute. I almost did. Uh... But you were saying that young Doc Blessing took over his father's practice out here. Oh, uh, yeah, a couple of years ago. And that included all the records his pa had always kept, complete records of every case he'd ever handled. Notes, prescriptions, x-rays, everything. Boxes, crates, cartons of them, Johnny. And that's what young Doc's looking into right now, all those old records. Why, Jake? Because he had a vague remembrance that one time, a long while ago, his pa... His... Oh, howdy, Doc. Jake. I take it you're Johnny Dollar. That's right. I'm Doc Blessing. Glad to hear you, Dollar. Uh, Jake, I've been over to police headquarters. And you found something, Doc. Yes, Doctor. Now, uh, you must understand this, Dollar. The police around here are fine. Good state authorities, too, but 
this thing may be beyond their reach. What'd you find in your pa's old record? Jake, I found evidence, including x-rays, that proved that my father patched up a broken thigh for Alf Garrett back in 47. X-rays clearly showed the steel femoral plate he used to pin two sections of bone together. Then, Doc. It's been kept from the papers, Dollar. But on the skeleton they found in the desert was that very same fractured thigh bone and the stainless steel plate that my father... Finally? Well, there, there's no question about it. That skeleton is Ralph Garrett's. Well, and with that bullet hole from Jerry Bisbee's gun in the skull. Exactly. Or a gun like Bisbee. Yeah, now, don't start kidding yourself, Johnny. Yeah, now, Dollar, there's... Yeah, been... okay, okay, you got a point. It looks as though Bisbee murdered him, all right. Of course he did. Why else would he skip out after the trial? So what you've got to do, Johnny, is get out and find it. Bring him back to justice. That's all. That's all? Well, yes. Oh, sure. Next time you refresh, enjoy a frosty, ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. Sociability, Charlie. All right, Kay, how's this? Pepsi is light, refreshes without filling. You like to refresh? Have a Pepsi right now. Well, offer it to everybody, Charlie. I will. Enjoy Pepsi at the fountain. It's delicious at home, too. Have one at lunch or with a snack. Charlie. At the beach or at dinner. Wherever you go, wherever you're thirsty. Pepsi is there. It's here, too, in our Be Sociable song. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair, get an air. Be sociable, have a Pepsi. For the weekend, have plenty of Pepsi around. Pick up an extra carton today. CK? I'm sociable. With Pepsi, everyone is. And now, the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, Jake, you say that right after his trial, Bisbee left town. And no forwarding address, and I don't need to tell you nobody's seen hide and hair of him since. Well, what happened to the rights to the mining claims? Sold them out, didn't he, Doc? That's correct. Did he get much money for them? No. And, of course, he had to share and share alike with Ralph's widow. Hey, Doc, you see, you just saw the police. Yeah, Dollar, and, of course, they're certain, too, that Bisbee murdered Ralph Garrett. On the strength of the evidence, I was able to provide for him. Uh Uh-huh. Any idea how they plan to proceed? Yeah, I assume they've notified the state police and that they'll put out bulletins all over the country. All of which will take time, of course. Yeah, in other words, they have no idea whatsoever where Jerry Bisbee might be by now. After all, Johnny, after all these years. Yeah. Bisbee may have gone anywhere after he left here, and since he alone had knowledge of his guilt at that time... Yeah, yeah. So all I have to do is perform a slight miracle and... Hey, wait, you say that he was a prospector while he was living here in Kingman. That's right. Well, what else did he do? Well, he kind of worked some of the mines now and then, enough to keep him in food and clothes and tobaccos off. And liquor, of course. He was a heavy, disagreeable drinker. But that's all. The only work he knew. Uh, now, I got some house calls to make. If I can be of any further help. Yeah, well, maybe that gives me an idea. Yeah? No, uh, no, no, you go ahead, Doc. Uh, I can work on it right here. Very well. Don't hesitate to call me. What's this idea, Johnny? Just let me use this phone. Well, sure, go ahead. My first call was to the Bureau of Mines in Washington. I practically had to have them check me out with the FBI before they'd give me the information I wanted. But finally, in the course of running up a $27 phone bill, that's item three on the expense account. Yes, Mr. Dollar, I've located a listing of mining claims in the name of Jerry Bisbee. Ah, uh-huh. then he's still prospecting. The list begins with 1944. All claims up to 1952 were in Arizona. Yeah. Would you like me to read them to you? No, no thanks. What uh, I'm interested in is recent claims, and I've got a suspicion they won't be in Arizona. Let me see now. Yes, you're quite right. Yeah? Within the past few years, he's apparently been doing some prospecting in the state of Nevada. Where? Well, in several rather widely separate... Well, of course, the office in Carson City could give you more up-to-date information than we have. Yeah, you're right. I'll call him. Thanks very much. Progress? Yeah, Jake. It looks like maybe we're getting somewhere. I knew you would, Johnny. (laughs) 
But on my call to Carson City, capital of Nevada, I ran into a stone wall. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but I have no authority to give out such information over oh, the phone. Oh, all right, now, listen, but please, when Miss, Mr. I... Parker gets back to the office, if you care to call back in two Well, uh, look, isn't there somebody else there who can give me the information I need? All I want... Without Mr. Parker's authorization? I doubt it, sir. But look, Miss, I just want to get... Of you were to come here in person and show the proper credentials. Yeah, sir. sure, thanks. What's the matter with him up there, Johnny? Oh, I don't know, Jake. Yeah? Is there anybody around here who owns a plane? A- an airplane? Well? Well, there's young Kenny McManus has a little single then come on, let's find him and see if he'd like to fly a charter job. <laughs> Expense account item four, 175 bucks to Kenny McManus for the use of his plane and his service as pilot. Only I'm not so sure I would have charted that particular plane if I'd taken time for a real good look at it before we started off. Yeah, with two passengers, a full load of gas, and my luggage, it was hardly... Well, let's face it. It was old and definitely underpowered for such a trip. We missed the tops of several mountains by only inches along the way. But somehow, shortly after noon, we landed in the Nevada capital. Item five, a buck to one of the lads at the hangar for a ride into the local bureau representative. Mr. Harker was somewhat reticent until I mentioned one word. What was that, Mr. Dollar? Murder, Mr. Harker. I want this man, Bisbee, for murder. I see. And I'm certain I can be of help to you. And now, thanks to Mr. Harker's cooperation, I finally really got on Jerry Bisbee's trail. Item six, fifty dollars deposit on a rental car, and I headed due east. I headed for the lively old ghost town of Virginia City. I... Didn't know I was also heading into one of the most dangerous situations in my whole career. tobaccos has never been equal for real smoking satisfaction. Have a real cigarette. Have a camel! Start to really enjoy smoking again. Now back to yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Red Rock Matter. Virginia City is fabulous monument to the rip-roaring days of the Comstock loan, when all too often a man's life depended on how fast he could draw, or how well he could defend a hunk of barren ground that he chipped away at in the hope it would give up millions of dollars worth of gold-bearing quartz, or the heavy blue mud so rich in silver ore. Still standing are many of the colorful buildings put up in the 1860s. Piper's Opera House, you picked up your key at the Bucket of Blood Saloon. There was the office of the Territorial Enterprise that carried editorials by Mark Twain. The famous Crystal Bar. The gambling halls where debts were paid in dust and nuggets. Famous names, too. O'Reilly and McLaughlin. Comstock and Gould. McKay and Mills. Fair, Flood and O'Brien. Yeah, the Bonanza Kings. All of them had been fabulous wealth in the days of the gold rush. Yep, you can almost see their ghosts walking the streets. Well, I found a fount of local information and a grizzled old character parked on a rocker in front of one of the ancient saloons. Bisbee, son. Jerry Bisbee. Yes, sir, that's right. Well, if I was you, I'd stay away from him. Yes, I would. Well, why do you say that, sir? Hmm? Because, son... Because, son, that D4 man's crazy... Staying up there, in that shack on top of Red Rock Pass. Red Rock Works? Working away at that worthless claim he has up there. Oh, where is Red Rock Pass? About halfway up 12-mile road over there. There's a 
wagon track up the pass. Well, look, can I make it with this car, Yeah, That pretty new car? No. Now take a horse or a burro to get... See, but you ain't going up to see that crazy Bisbee. Why not? Well? Oh, he catch you anywhere near that mine of his. Then he'd shoot you first and find out who you was after. Yeah, well, I'll have to take that chance. Oh, no, no, you Thanks listen. a lot, old-timer. Oh, At Martin's stable, I had to shell out a $100 deposit when they learned I was going up into Red Rock Pass. And again, I got a warning about running into Bisbee. But I made sure my gun was free in the holster and set out for the pass. It was after three when I left the 12-mile road and nearly sundown by the time I reached the top of the pass. And there I found Jerry Bisbee's weathered old shack. But no sign of Bisbee himself. Bisbee! Jerry Bisbee! And then I saw the trail leading to the little mine on the face of a cliff. So I started over toward it, walking around the huge red boulders in my path, scattered about as though some giant hand many centuries ago... Bisbee. Get back onto that horse and get out of here. Sorry, but I got to talk to you. You see this here gun? Oh, I see it all right. Shoot the eye out and the snake with it. Besides, I know why you come here. Do you? Because they maybe... found Ralph Garrett's bones down to the desert. That's right. But you won't take me in, sir. Don't be too sure of that. Talk up, boy. Come, I don't hear very good. I said I'm going to take you in for murder. Talk up, I said. Guys, you've got no right to take me in. Wrong, Bisbee. You hear me? I say you're wrong. Wrong, am I? Didn't they try me once for murder? Didn't they let me free? So what? That doesn't mean I, I want... Well, you and anybody else ought to know they can't try me in twice for the same thing. Holy smoke, he's right. Yeah, them fools down there, they let me off. So now there's nothing you or anybody else can do about it. So get out. I say get out of here. <laughs> A well-aimed shot kicked up the sand in front of me. I ducked behind a pile of boulders and crouched there, waiting to see what he'd do next. Then I heard it from a sort of hole under one of the rocks. A rattlesnake, almost to my feet. Slowly, carefully, I pulled up my gun. I took him in and... Hey, there were others in there. There must have been a nest of them. No use, boy. I'm coming over there to get you. Yeah, well, listen. I'm going to kill you. There was another rock to my left, a boulder that maybe I could reach without his seeing me. And the sound of the rappers at my feet wasn't exactly friendly. So I bent down low and made a dash for it. <laughs> Brother, that time I practically tasted the lead. It's no good, boy. You're not so smart. Because from where you are now, you ain't got no place to move. Not without me having a shot at you. And all it's going to take is one clear shot. Bisbee, can you hear me? And this rock pile where you was, I can get you without you having a shot at me. So I got you cornered, boy. Yeah, he was right. He knew it and I knew it. Through a narrow cleft in the rock in front of me, too narrow even to push the barrel of my pistol, I could see him advancing slowly toward the pile of boulders where I'd left the nest of rapids. But if he was so deaf, he'd never hear them. Uh-oh, Bisbee. Hey, Bisbee, listen to me. Talk up. You got anything to say? Stay away from that pile of rocks. I'm going to kill you. Hey, well, I said stay away from that pile of rocks. I'm going to kill you dead. Unless you throw out your gun and then come out here with your hands up over your head. Come on. Come on out of there. Yeah. Okay. I'll do it. What you say? I said yes. Hey, look. Here's my gun. You coming out like I told you? Yes. Yes, look. With my hands up. Ah, uh, shows what a fool you are. What? Because I'm going to kill you anyway. The same as I did Ralph Garrett. Bisbee. Hey, Bisbee, wait. Stay away from those rocks. If you got another gun hit on you, do you know... Bisbee! Things happened fast. He jumped backward into the protection of the rock pile. And he raised and aimed his gun to shoot me down. But a sudden movement among the angry nest of rattlesnakes... No! 
By the time I got over to him and hauled him out of that pit of death, half a dozen of the deadly rattlers must have struck him. He died before I could get him back to Virginia City. Yeah, justice again. In one of her own inscrutable ways. Expense account total, including a couple of good stiff drinks. Then the trip on back to Hartford, 496.25. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Hi, this is Dennis James. Say, remember way back when this melody was popular? There's something very special about a long-time favorite, isn't there? Well, folks feel the same way about one of Kellogg's favorites, Kellogg's Allbrand. Going on 41 years now, it's been America's most popular good food way to fight irregularity from lack of bulk. Because it's whole bran, Kellogg's All Bran gentles away irregularity safely and reliably. And because it's deep toasted for extra crispness, it never gets mushy in milk. There's only one All Bran, Kellogg's All Bran. That's A double L hyphen B R A N. Kellogg's All Bran. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Well, next week, the canned canary matter. Yeah, you heard it right. And I promise you that title is a real fooler. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Harley Bear, Harry Bartell, Vic Perrin, John Daner, Will Wright, Tom Hanley, and Bill James. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is John Wall speaking. Suspense follows on the CBS radio network. You know, Dooley, I've been reading up on hypnosis. Come here and let me try it on you. I'm an officer of the law and don't approve of making a man divulge his secrets. However, I'll stand by in case there's criminology involved. I just want to clear up some of his problems, Officer Sud. But I haven't got any problems. I'm the soul of contentment. Maybe that's your trouble. You're too contented. Lie down, Dooley. You're going to sleep. I feel so good. He's under my influence. Now, little tight, get up. Go straight to the beer of your choice. Astounding. He's heading for Utica Club. Cause Utica Club will still take the trouble to age beer the natural way. Utica Club, you see... He's got no problem. He's a happy, well-adjusted fair mob. Brewed by the West End Brewing Company of Utica, New York. You're tuned to WROW Radio in Albany, New York. Time, 5.30.